I am moving on to a very interesting property, a very interesting result, right? Application is very, very, um, um, in, very, very nice, and you can show off with your skills. So let's say, um, I'll tell you how you can show off. So exponent of prime in factorial, exponent of prime in factorial n. What do I mean by this? See, when I open up a particular factorial, let's say factorial n, it will have the prime factors like 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and so on. So 2 to the power something will come, right? 3 to the power something will come, 5 to the power something will come, and so on. So what my aim is, I'm trying to write a factorial notation as the multiples of prime numbers, right? As into its prime factors. Okay, so if I'm factorizing this factorial n value into its prime factorization, so I have, let's say, 2 to the power even, 3 to the power e2, 5 to the power e3. Now, what exactly the, uh, the, the intentions are there? What, what exactly I want to calculate? I want to calculate the exponent of a prime number, particular p. So if I want to know what is the prime number, what is the exponent of this prime number 2, which happens to be e1 here, I want to know e1. I want to know e2. I want to know e3. All right, are you getting my point? So you must be thinking, sir, we can multiply that and then we can easily get it. Yes, of course you can do that if it is like 10 factorial, 20 factorial. Imagine, now which year is it running? 2020. Let's say imagine if I have talked to you or if I have asked you that uh, what is the exponent of 3 in factorial 2020? 2000 and, uh, 2020. Then are you going to multiply that? <laughs> no, you are surely not going to do that. And with this only you can show off a bit. So this particular example or property will actually make you empowered with the this particular capability of generating the exponent of any prime number into any factorial. Understood? Let me take an example. It will be more clear to you. Now, uh, let's say if I'm writing factorial 3. That is nothing but what? 2 into 3. So I can write 2 to the power 1, 3 to the power 1. I can evaluate it. Okay, perfect. Factorial 4, 24, 2 cube into 3. So we got 2 power 3 into 3 power 1. Factorial 5, which is already 120, that is 2 cube into 3 to the power into 5 to the power 1. Right, so a challenge because when you have factorial 100, right, so that is something that you have to comment on, or factorial 2020. So what should I do in that? In that case, let's say, if p is a prime number, so I have various prime numbers, like I'm calling my prime numbers as p1, p2, p3, why? I can have 2, I can have 3, I can have 5, so on. So I'm calling them as p1, p2, p3, right, okay. So let's say a particular factorial n as interpreted as p1 raised to the power e1, p2 raised to the power e2, and p3 raised to the power et. Right, so exponent of p1 in factorial n is nothing but as what? This is given to me as e1. And please note down the formula, be ready with your pen, write down it, that if I want to have the e1, which is the exponent of the prime number p1 in the factorial n, that will be given by this formula. The formula is e1 is equal to greatest integer function. So this bracket denotes here gif. Do you remember gif? If I have gif of 2.5, I'll be reporting as 2, right? right? And if I have gif of 3, I'll be reporting it as simply 3. So this is nothing but the greatest integer function, right? Or we report the integer so it is nothing but greater integer less than or equal to that particular number, less than or equal to, right? So I hope this is clear for you that you know what is GIF. Okay, so they say that, I'll, I'll come back to my own formula, the original formula, that E1 becomes equal to GIF of n by P1 plus GIF of n by P1 square. This is the second power of P1, that prime number P1, that we are evaluating with this. Then plus GIF, uh, GIF of n by P1 cube, the third power of the prime number P1. Right, you must be thinking, sir, how are you calling it as first prime power, second power, third power? I'll, I'll come back to that. I'll, I'll explain that. How does it comes? Okay, so this bracket, as I already told you, this denotes the greatest integer function. Now, let's say, if I want to have the exponent of the prime number P2 here, what will I be writing? Please, read it out with me or, uh, or, or, or try to uh, interpret it. So if I want to have the exponent of the prime number p2 in the factorial n, which happens to be nothing but e2. So e2 should be written as according to the previous formula, or if you try to relate it to the previous one, this one, with respect to the formula of e1, e2 will become equal to gif of n by p2 plus gif of n by p2 square plus gif of n by p2 cube and so on. Where once again, that bracket denotes the greatest integer function. All right. 
Okay, so this is the formula. So anyhow, if you can get me, you can get the exponent of that prime number p. Now you must be wondering, sir, how this formula came up, right? So let me quickly take up an example. It will be easy for you to understand from that perspective. So just for the proof purpose, I'm intentionally choosing the factorial 10. Okay, so factorial 10 will be nothing but what? 10, 1 into 2 into 3, so on till 10, the first product of first and natural numbers. Now, if I'm saying that, let's say, uh, I know that till factorial 10, I have the prime numbers 2, 3, 5, and 7 involved in that. That's it, perfect. So I'll have some exponent for 2, some exponent for 3, some exponent for 5, and some exponent of 7 in this product. Okay, let's say I'm calling this exponent of 2 as e1, exponent of 3 as e2, exponent of 5 as e3. Okay, 7, you know, it will occur only once, so that's okay, we'll come back to that. Now, let's apply the formula. If I want to have e1, right, which is the exponent of the prime number 2, so what should be the formula? The formula was nothing but, I'll write it for the reference. Let's say the prime number p, so this is gif of n by p plus gif of n by p square, or in fact, if I'll write p1, let's say, because I give you the formula in terms of p1, p2 and all, okay, so, and so on, till up to it goes. So you must be also thinking, sir, it, is it going till infinite or something? No, it will be finite value. You'll understand why it comes here. So be very focused here, all right? Listen properly, what am I writing? How am I explaining? Right? Ultimately, formula matters. Of course, formula matters. But I want every one of you to understand the working as well very quickly. And then the application is something which you have to remember for a longer period of time. Okay. Now, if I'm writing this E1, I know that for the prime number 2, I'll be writing the first as GIF of 10 by 2. What does that give me? This 2 here is nothing but 2 raised to 1. So, what exactly it's telling me? It's telling me that till the number 10, from 1, 2, 3, so on, till 10, the product that I've written here, this one, the value of factorial 10, what is the exponent of 2 or the first exponent of 2? How many times that first exponent of 2 has occurred here? So this will denote me nothing but the first exponent of 2. First exponent of 2 in reaching till 10. So how many times this two first exponent would have? This is nothing but the multiples of 2. And what are the multiples of 2? The multiples of 2 are nothing but what? They are simply 2 into 4 into 6 into 8 into 10. Are you able to see those arrows here? These are nothing but the first exponent of 2 that I've counted here. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Once again, the first exponent of 2 can be counted as the multiples of 2. And in reaching 10, the first multiples of 2 will be nothing but 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. Right? That I can also calculate by the 10 by 2. That's why we have this GIF of 10 by 2. Got that? Perfect. Now, the second one. After that, I want to look for what is the second exponent of 2. What do you mean by second exponent of 2? See, in some places, we'll be getting the multiple as 2 square, like 4. Right? So if I have 4 as a multiple, or if I have 4 as a multiple, it's nothing but 2 square. And in 2 square, I have 2 to the power 1 I've already counted in the first bracket or first GIF. The second power of 2 I'm counting here. So I have to look for the multiples of 4. So how many multiples of 4 till 10? That is nothing but 10 by 4. How many multiples of 4? 4 and 8. That's it. So what do I got? I got this as GIF of 10 by 2 square. Exactly. The multiples of 4 till re in reaching the natural number 10. Wow. Lovely. So are you trying to say, sir, the next one should be the GIF of 10 by 2 cube according to the formula. Then it should be nothing but the, can you see that third arrow here? The one which has just popped up. Let me quickly show you once again. So let's say if I want to go for the third exponent of 2. So the third exponent of 2 will be nothing but the multiple of 8 actually. How many multiples of 8 till 10? It's only this, this simply. That's why you got only one arrow here. So what do I got here? See, on 8 we have 3 arrows, on 4 we have 2 arrows. So 2 arrows means that the second exponent of 2. 3 arrow means the third exponent of 2, the third arrow on that. Right? So what does that mean? Basically, the value has become equal to the 10 by 2 to the power 1, gif of that, plus gif of 10 by 2 square, plus gif of 10 by 2 cube, plus gif of 10 by 2 to the power 4 and so on. As you were asking about it, you must be thinking that it will go till infinity. How will we be evaluating that? Let's quickly see. What is GIF of 10 by 2? 10 by 2 is what? 5. What is GIF of 5? 5. Okay, lovely. What is GIF of 10 by 2 square? So 10 by 2 square is 10 by 4. 10 by 4 is nothing but what? That is, see, 
This is 10 by 4 and the value becomes equal to what? 2.5. Uh oh. So if it's GIF of 2.5, that will give you what? Simply 2. The second one is what? 2. Why? These are the second exponent which I have counted from the number 4 and 8. Are you getting that? Lovely. Then the third one, 10 by 8, 1.125. GIF of 1.125 is what? Simply 1. Plus 10 by 16. What is the GIF of 10 by 16? It's a fraction. What is the GIF of a fraction? What is the integer in a fraction? Zero. That's why I'll be calling the last one as what? Zero. And you know that if I'm going to increase the denominator further, then the number will eventually become even a lesser fraction. And for every fraction, the greatest integer will become zero. That's why it will not go till infinity. It will go up to till finite values only. Perfect. Okay. So we got this as zero and so on. So what do I have it here? I have simply as e1 is equal to 5, 2, 7 plus 1a. So e1 becomes equal to 8. That means in factorial 10, the exponent of 2 becomes 8. So 2 to the power 8 is there. Understood it? Wow, a lot of things here. So the first exponent was calculated with the help of 10 GIF of 10 by 2. The second exponent of 2 was calculated by 10 by 2 square. The third exponent of 2 was calculated by 10 by 2 cube and so on. Right? And it will not go till infinity. It will go up to some finite value only. All right. So now my question is I want to reach to the 3 to the power e2 now. I want to comment on this e2, the second exponent, sorry, the exponent of 3. Formula says, let's quickly write the formula. The formula should be e2. So the value for e2 will become what? Nothing but gif of 10 by 3. The formula, right? You know that. This is n by p plus n by p square and so on. Okay. So this is 10 by 3. What does that mean? That means I'm looking for the first exponent of 3 in reaching to the number 10 in factorial 10. So what are the first exponent of 3 that I'll be getting? I'll be getting the first exponent of 3 as from the multiples of 3. What are the multiples of 3? Till 10, 3, 6 and 9. Can you see those arrows? These are three arrows that we have on 3, 6 and 9. Because all these three numbers will give me the first exponent of 3 to be counted. So the first exponent of 3 can be counted with the help of the multiples of 3. And multiples of 3 in reaching 10 can be calculated from the GIF of 10 by 3. Are you getting it now? Lovely. So the second one should be gif of 10 by 3 square and that will give me the second exponent of 3. Second exponent of 3 will come from 3 square or 9. So I have to look for the multiples of 9. How many multiples of 9 till factorial 10? So in factorial 10, simply 1. We have only one multiple of 9 which is 1, 9 itself. Okay. So we got gif of 10 by 3 square and of course I'll write this 10 by 2 cube, uh, sorry 3 cube. So that is the multiple of 27. How many multiple of 27 do I have in factorial 10? Nothing. 27 will appear way ahead of 10. Okay. So, what do I got here? GIF of 10 by 3. So, 10 by 3. 3.33 approximately. GIF will be 3. Perfect. 10 by 9. You know that there is only integer value will come out as 1. And the moment when I have 10 by 27, it becomes a fraction. And for every fraction, the integer involved in that is what? 0. So ahead of all those terms will become what? Simply 0. What does that mean? It means that the value of e2 will become simply as 4. What does that mean? That the exponent of 3 in the factorial 10 is nothing but 4. So we got 2 to the power 8 into 3 to the power 4. Perfect. Okay. So we got 2 power 8 into 3 to the power 4. Sorted. Now, I have 5 raised to e3. I want to comment on the exponent of 5. So formula should be gif of 10 by 5. That will give me the first exponent of 5. Right? That will be multiples of 5. How many multiples of 5 in factorial 10? Simply 2. What are they? 5 and 10. Right? So we got simply GIF of 5 by 10 by 5. Plus GIF of 10 by 5 square. That is multiple of 25. So this will give me the second exponent of 5. Is there any term which can generate the second exponent of 5? Then it should have a multiple of 25. Do I have a multiple of 25 till factorial 10? With these numbers 1 into 2 into 3 so on till 10? Nothing. What does that mean? It will eventually give me 0. Mathematically also what it will give me? See, GIF of 10 by 5 will simply give me 2 and GIF of 10 by 25 will give me what? A fraction and the integer involved in that fraction is what? Simply 0. So I'll say that the integer value will be nothing but 0 only. Right? And once again, for all the other terms ahead of it, what will I be getting? I'll be actually simply getting all these values ahead of that as what? Simply 0. So it will become what? Eventually, the exponent of 5 which is e3 will become equal to 2. So 
So ultimately, what I will be commenting here, I will be saying that the factorial 10 will effectively look like 2 to the power 8, 3 to the power 4 into 5 square. Understood how it is behaving, the entire theory of it, how we have uh, explained it and how this idea has come up here. All right.